Now, you, you're co-writing this with, with Jared Way. Yep. And talk about that collaboration. I mean, this is obviously a kind of a friendship that you guys have had. Yeah, yeah, we've been friends since art school. So we were working on some stuff before this and writing together on some projects that we were developing. And he just called me, initially he called me to kind of just help out with the line um, when, when everything was starting to like gel. And then he brought up Cave and we were we were kind of spitballing ideas about Cave and then it just kind of, we just kind of realized we loved this character and we wanted to do the book together about him. It's, it's, it's a very different book from the rest of the line because it's, you know, it's got adventure. It's got like this, this kind of dark mood to it. Yeah. Talk about, you know, you, you took this very obscure character and had to kind of flesh him out for, for an ongoing. It, ha it had to be different, I felt, because the other three titles, I mean, I, they're all DC Comics characters, but with Cave, I, I was like, I know no one's heard heard of this guy because the night that Gerard asked me was the first time I had heard of Cave Carson. So I was like, we really have to just go for it, like full on. And I, and I just, you know, tonally, I like things that are more tonally complex, you know, you know, even like, I always use, you know, the original Ghostbusters as an example. It's a movie that's funny, but it's scary when it needs to be. You know, there's there's real stakes for the characters, even though they're cracking jokes, and, and it makes that a more engaging experience. So, I really, I really love that kind of kind of story. So I just wanted to tell like an old school adventure story, where anything can happen. Characters are dying and coming on and coming off. That's the kind of stuff I love to read. So that's the kind of book I wanted to make. What is it that you like most about getting inside Cave's mind? Since there, there really was very little out there to, yeah. to kind of base it, anything around or to, to lay the yeah. groundwork. We, we started, uh, I think it was maybe the design of the original Cave Carson team. It was like this red and white, uh, really cool 60s looking outfit that immediately just spoke like Wes Anderson to me. Um, and so of course I started thinking of Life Aquatic and Bill Murray's like performance and how he's kind of a curmudgeon, you know. And, and it's funny because then reading old Cave Carson comics from the 80s and the 70s, he's got a temper. He like snaps at people. He's not very like, he's not socially, uh, he's not really good at it. Even the Superman issue, uh, that I read uh, researching the, the current one, he was a total jerk to Superman. And I was like, maybe that's the kind of thing that he was at a time in his life where he regrets doing that, because that was like the one time he hung out with Superman, and he was like, I was a total jerk. I like big-timed him, it's Superman, what was I thinking, you know? And he got caught up in his own uh, his own world. So I like that. Cave, I like Cave because he's, wherever I would be polite in a situation, Cave wouldn't be. And I, and I But yet, you know, he says the things I feel sometimes, but I would never say. But Cave doesn't have that kind of hang up. There's a, a really strong visual element to this because you you guys were able to get Mike Oman, um as as an artist. You got Nick Filardi who was doing colors with him on Powers. Talk about the strength of that and how that defines uh, oh, Cave Carson. It's, I mean, it, it definitely defines Cave Carson. Mike's got such a like uh, epic sense of storytelling and also. His art style is the kind of style I like for adventure books. It, it harkens back to like, you know, kind of more animated, more animated style and uh, and I love that. So, so um, when we first started working on the book together, you know, Mike would ask me like, what's what's really going to be like a reoccurring thing? Like, what do we have to design? What are we going to be seeing every issue? And I'm like, other than the Mighty Mole, we're just going to new places every issue. And his reaction to that was just to be like totally invigorated and charged about it. And so, you know, we made these, uh, the fungus monsters that they fight, and I was like, it's total, like, John Carpenter, the thing. I want these things to look different, each and every one. And he has just been attacking that with, with aplomb. You know, he, he loves that challenge. And the team, and also having Nick as our colorist just really completes, you know, just completes that package. Now, we've just finished the first, kind of the first story arc. How far have you planned out ahead? We're going to expand the supporting cast a bit. Uh, I'm going to bring back some of the original Cave Carson team, who are, who are uh, Johnny's in the book right now, but there's Christine, who unfortunately had to get cut uh, from issue one just for time reasons, but she, she originally had an appearance, uh, and they have a complex friendship because there used to be a love triangle there uh, before he met his wife, so, so they're interesting. and. Um, yeah, I, I really want Cave, you know, there's only so many stories you can tell about a guy finding some underground city or fighting some giant monster underneath Metropolis, you know. Uh, so without giving too much away, I want to expand uh, the things that Cave 
does in, in the book, like what his world is and the places he'll go and the stuff he'll find. So hopefully that first year will set up a nice springboard for some really, really crazy stuff uh, in the years to come.